Ohm's Law. In 1827, a German physicist, George Simon Ohm, formulated a relationship between the electric current flowing through a metallic wire and the potential difference or voltage applied across its ends. It is stated as, Electric current flowing through a metallic wire is directly proportional to the potential difference across its ends, provided its temperature and physical conditions remains the same. That is V proportional to I, that is voltage proportional to current or current proportional to voltage. This means that the more is the work that is done by the battery to move the charges, the more is the flow of charges through the conductor. That is V proportional to I or V is equal to constant into I and V is equal to R into I where R is called the resistance of the given metallic wire or V is equal to I into R and this is the Ohm's equation. This gives the mathematical form of Ohm's law. The ratio of V by I is always a constant and this is the resistance value of that particular metallic wire. Resistance noted by the letter R. Resistance is a property of a conductor to resist the flow of charges. What does it mean? We know that matter or conductor is made up of free electrons. When these electrons move through the crystal lattice or matter, they happen to collide with the nearby electrons, ions and atoms. And hence, they oppose the flow of electrons or the flow of charges. This opposition or hindrance to the flow of charges is called as resistance. Hence, we can say that a resistance or a resistor offers an appreciable resistance or hindrance to the flow of charges. So, resistance from Ohm's law we know is the ratio of potential difference across the conductor to the current flowing in to it, through it or R is equal to V by I. Thus, the SI unit of resistance becomes Ohm. Oh, that is, ohm is equal to volt by ampere. Hence, the resistance of a wire is said to be 1 ohm if the potential difference across its ends is 1 volt and 1 ampere current flows through it. Hence, it is clear that the resistance of a material is inversely proportional to the current flowing through it. That means, more is the hindrance that is offered to the flow of charge, less is the amount of current that is produced in the circuit. That means if the resistance in a circuit is high, then the current produced is less and vice versa. Experimental proof for Ohm's law. The experimental setup consists of a wire of resistance R of length xy, a voltmeter, an ammeter and a number of cells which are connected in series. First of all, we include one cell in the circuit and the corresponding readings in the voltmeter and ammeter are taken. The experiment is further repeated with two cells, three cells and so on and the readings can be tabulated. For example, we can see the values plotted and we see that the ratio voltage to current is found to be a constant. And this particular value is the value of the resistance of the wire. This shows that the resistor that is taken is an ohmic conductor which obey Ohm's law. When we plot the values of voltage and current in a graph, we get a graph. The nature of the graph is a straight line. The slope of the VI graph gives the resistance of the wire. Hence, it is clearly proved that voltage increases with current in this particular resistor and hence it obeys Ohm's law.